<laughs> um, welcome to today's ministry training. Mike is a little under the weather. So um, myself and Brother Joe, we're going to share some things that we've learned along the way that might be helpful in your, um, your journey in, in ministry and in healing and deliverance. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Julie. Uh, let's just open in prayer and we'll get started. Okay. Dear Father, thank you so much for bringing us all together today, Lord. Um, we're here to meet with you. We're here to learn from you, Lord, and learn from each other. Lord, uh, I pray, Father, that you would open our hearts and open our minds to receive from your Spirit. And guide us in all that we do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I say that because about an hour and a half ago, I got a call asking if if I would be and maybe Joe would be willing to share a little bit today. So when I was out for a walk thinking I was just going to be a consumer today <laughs> instead of a producer, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm not in that position. Um, so I'm just going to talk for a little while and then Joe's going to come up and share a little bit. Um, so I'm a counselor here, that most of you already know that, um, and I've been here a little over two years, about two and a half years almost, and before that I was a counselor in the schools, and before that a teacher. So I've work, been working with people my whole adult life. One thing that I have come to learn is all people want to learn. In the school, you have kids that are sometimes really difficult, and you think maybe they don't want to learn. But in reality, they do, even though um, they act like they don't. And then once I started working with people on a one-on-one -on -one level as a counselor in the schools, I learned that all people um, want to get better. All people have um, hurts. And in our business, we call them soul wounds. Everybody gets soul wounds along the way. Everybody. So um, one of the jobs that we have here is, um, but one of the roles, I'll say, is we, we have to listen. We have to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us and what that person needs. And so a lot of times... We don't know until we approach the person, say, at the altar or in the hallway or in, the, in an office one-on-one -on -one to find out really what is it that they're here for and what do they need. Um, a lot of times people come to us and they say, you know, I have a witchcraft curse on me. Can you just break the curse? And um, although that may be true, there's more, there's other issues, there's root causes, and we try to get to those. So the first question we always ask is what? Who hurt you? Right. Who hurt you? And so that's how a soul wound is created. It's through hurt. And everybody gets their feelings hurt at some point in their life, right? Usually before the age of three, there's some hurt that occurs. For women, hurt lingers. We, we experience hurt and we stay in that a state of hurt longer than males typically. Men get, get hurt and then they get what? Angry. Right. They get or mad. Even. Huh? Or even. Or even. <laughs> Thank you for that. Right. <laughs> I think that's angry. So, <laughs> no umbrella. so um, women, girls, we tend to get, we get hurt, we get our heart hurt, get our heart broken, and we might stay in that state for um, a long time, actually. It can linger a long time. I, um, I didn't understand any of this growing up, but I got my heart hurt. I grew up with three brothers, an alcoholic father, a controlling, scared mother, and a lot of wounds. I took in a lot of them, and I stayed sad for a really long time, and that f fell right into depression and anxiety. And so I, I, did I get mad? Yeah, frustrated, mad, but I was mostly hurt. I cried a lot. I remember um, when I first, my first major, major betrayal was 
uh, having, I was married and he left for another woman. And I cried for one year straight, every day. I just cried and cried and cried. And um, I journaled to the Lord and wrote my prayers. And, and God did a lot of work of healing. But I never got to the place where I wanted to get even or get revenge. Um, it's hard. I don't know. I think my mom taught me uh, through her actions. She never doesn't stay mad long. She'll get mad. She gets hurt. She gets mad. And then she's over it. And I, she taught me that. And I think that's um, something that... I can say it's true to this day, you know, you can hurt my feelings and they can stay hurt for a little while, but I, I might get mad, but then I get over it really quickly. Not everybody's like that. So I said all that to say is when we're in this work of working with people, we have to realize that there's hurt, especially if someone comes at us harshly or, um, you know, so how are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> okay. That's generally, there's a hurt there under there somewhere, right? Um, when we're working with people in this ministry, you, you can 100% of the time, 100% of the people who walk in through the door have hurts. They have soul wounds and they came in because they want to get better. And I just want to say, um, before I, I turn things over to Joe in a little while, I want to say that when we approach people at the altar or we meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, we want to come with them um, with love. Because it's the Holy Spirit, God's love through the Holy Spirit that heals the wounds of the soul. It's the only thing that can do it. Amen. Yes. Um, I got to, uh, I, I do a little class here for women on Tuesday nights, and in January it's going to be every Tuesday, in spite of what our website says. <laughs> it says every other Tuesday right now, but it's going to be every Tuesday um, we meet, I do a little teaching, and then we get into a circle and we share. I have some questions, and a lot of times we pray, and there's tears, there's deliverance, there's healing. Um, I'm grateful for my sister Renju. She's here today and she helps me. And last week we got to, um, what we do is we're really, um, taking these women into our arms and we're walking them to the throne of father and helping them open their heart to receive his love. And, and the way that we do that is we listen, we're patient, we hug them, you know, we're, we serve them. That's how we do it. So um, soul wounds are, you know, sometimes there, it's a gaping wound. And you know someone has a big giant soul wound when they get offended very easily. Right? Um, they're hard to get close to. You could describe their personality like a cactus. They're, they're very, uh, you can't get close to them because they're keeping you at arm's length. Underneath there is this multiple wounds on their soul and one little touch is very painful. So, we have to be mindful of that when we're working with people and they have an abrasive personality or they have, um, they're very sure or they're, they come across really harsh. It takes patience because, <clears throat> you know, we don't, who likes that? You come across somebody and they're, they're quick to, you know, get offended or they're really short in how they speak to you. That, that doesn't feel good and, and, a lot of times we want to respond with a hurtful way, you know, a, a short, quick answer also. Well, we sh can't do that because we know that they're hurting. And so we have to be patient. And, you know, the Bible says be slow to speak and slow to become angry and quick to listen. And in this ministry, we have to do that. And I'm so grateful that I have lots of good role models around me that do that all the time. Lots of tenderness. Um, so, um, I don't know, soul wounds, like, like I said, an hour and a half, two hours ago, I was 
asked to talk about soul wounds. <laughs> so that's what I have. Um, yes, good question. Thanks, Pete. Um, so like we talked the other day, remember yes, we were talking yes. about Thursday night that when Rick was doing yeah. thing which we never heard him do before, which mm -hmm. was really cool. Um, so basically, that's the same thing. I can't remember exactly what he said, if it was wounds on the heart or soul wound, but he was inviting the Holy Spirit to come in and heal. Yes. And when he was doing that, I sat down because I felt the Holy Ghost. Mm. He was just rushing to me, healing. Everything he was saying, I had. It's like, that was for me. I told him, that, hey, thanks, man. That was all for me. Um, that's beautiful. But it was powerful. So what you're saying then is we can't cast that thing out. I'm just... Want to get, make sure okay, that. yeah. We have to invite the Holy Ghost to do a healing work in us. So the way I understand it, I would agree with you, yes. Um, uh, the way that I understand it, and I'm no way an expert on this, um, but wounds have to be healed and evil spirits are casted out. But it appears that sometimes... It, we have a trouble, I have trouble getting a spirit out of a person before that wound is healed. Right. And so that's why we ask the person, hey, who hurt you? Who wounded you? Okay, let's forgive them. Let's release them. And as they, and it's really important I've noticed that people need to allow their emotions, to allow themselves to feel that emotion that comes with remembering that wound or feeling that hurt or remembering that time in their life. And then they start to, you know, say in faith, by faith it is, right? I forgive this person. You know, we all forgive in our mind. So we forgive and you're helping that person forgive. And then once, I don't know when it happens, but we just know it happens when that emotion is, is raised up and we can see the Holy Spirit and then we can cast the Spirit out. They come out so much easier when that person's getting that healing. Um, I, I don't know. It, it seems like spirits protect the soul wounds. They, if there's a wound, it's like they sit right on top of it. That's what it seems like. Yeah, they seem like they do that. I mean, I never see this stuff, so I don't know. Uh, I don't have any proof. But it appears that they, uh, I call them sometimes a keeper of the curse. They are there because they had a right to be there. And, they're, and once you get the wound healed or you start to get healing into the wound, they don't have anything to hold on to. Nice. Yeah. I would say exactly what you said is correct from, from what I've experienced. Okay. It's like a demon sitting on top of that wound. Yeah, yes. And then you, you can't get that demon off there, but once you and, and when Heal. It come out, mm. like grown men, I don't know why these grown men are always crying when I pray. And I know they're getting that healed, that wound in their heart getting healed, and mm -hmm. the spirits come right out. Yes. So when you see the tears come down, they're getting healed. Yes. And I usually mm -hmm. that these things roll out. God's catching the bodily budget. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, I, I say that too, that Father has this bottle. It's the only thing I can see that he collects. And that's our tears. So let him have your tears. <laughs> When they come, let them come. Don't be embarrassed, especially the men in the room listening. Don't, don't feel shame. That shame, that's the enemy, right? Bringing shame when the tears come. Just let them come. Father's right there catching them. Yes, German. Yeah, like the Word of God says that He came to heal the broken heart. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's what it is. It's the soul wounds of the broken heart. So when we, when we read the Bible, we talk about uh, healing and then also about deliverance for evil spirits. But, you know, right in with that is, you know, he came to heal a broken heart because that's yeah. what the devil knows about that. Yeah. You know, I tell people that what we live is we live, a, it's a chess game between good and evil. Mm -hmm. You know, this ministry gives you the answers to fight. You know, where in the world you basically run around like a chicken without a head trying to find a solution to a problem where they give you pills or just counseling itself, which may help you a little bit, but it doesn't give you the deliverance for you. Yeah. And that's why, you know, forgiveness is so important. Because when you talk about that, that spirit to control the person that's soul wound, 
is when that, that forgiveness comes in and the broken heart just releases. You know, that's when the healing comes. And, then, and that's when the spirit that was strong becomes weak. Mm -hmm. And then it comes out. That's good. Thanks, German. Yeah. I gather yes. Joe probably drew this. <laughs> yeah, this is up here every month. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the, I've heard that the soul is the emotional side of us. Yeah. It's where the ho we, our emotions are housed. And we'll probably get into this a little later. Mm -hmm. All right. He didn't hear you ask say that, but yeah. <laughs> it was purely a transition. So yeah, this is a, yeah the five parts of a human. Um, Mike goes over that a lot. And um, yeah, the spirit man is where the Holy Spirit is living. And that's our spirit gets born again and the Holy Spirit's there. And no evil spirits can get into our spirit. And that's why people get confused. They're like, well, if you're a Christian, how can you have spirits? Mm -hmm. Well, they can get into your body, they can get into your soul, and they can get into your mind and influence your conscience, which is in the mind. So um, this is a revelation that Mike got many years ago, and he shares with us every month. But it helps to understand, wow, how, how are demons affecting a Christian if I'm born again and I have the Holy Spirit? Well, that's because the Holy Spirit's in our spirit, man, and our soul, our emotions is different. Um, <clears throat> one other thing I wanted to say about heal helping someone receive God's love to he get healing for soul wounds um, <clears throat> is a appropriate, healthy touch. Every person needs human touch. And we, you ever shake somebody's hand and it's like a, their hands limp? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that feels? Ugh. <laughs> um, if you are not authentic, in your ministry, that person will know it. Just like shaking someone's hand with a limp hand. You're just like, you don't even want to touch their hand. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and something about that I had so much fear for so long, because, man, I just love touching people mm -hmm. all over my, my hand and chest, and I hold them, and I, I just, I don't know, I like don't know, like a big whatever, but, um, Teddy bear. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. I want them to experience God's love. That's right. That we do. So what you said is absolutely correct. They'll know. You and and the thing that I always struggled with because I always asked Rick, because man, you gotta stop doing it. You're gonna pick up demons. But that I don't. I don't agree with that anymore. I when I'm helping someone and I'm with them, it's the love of God flowing That's through right. me, yes. and it overcomes all, it drives back demons, it repels them. Perfect I love, right? I refuse mm -hmm. to believe that I've been loaded down, because I don't. Amen. I just make sure I just didn't, uh, cast off and it came in. But man, give them all you've got, everything you have, every bit of your love, and God will flow through you into them. Totally. And, totally. Right? One hundred percent. There's a hugging anointing. Peak has the hugging anointing. <laughs> Kelly has the hugging anointing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, he's got that hugging anointing that you know. It's. I watched it last Tuesday. Um, Sister Renju, she just hugged this woman as she cried. Yeah. And she she wasn't in a hurry to stop hugging her. And the woman just cried. There's no casting out. She just prayed the love of the Father over her, and this woman just wept. She sobbed. And, and I know she left here feeling better, and, and, and a portion of her soul was healed that night because of that genuine authenticity. And so if, if you say, wow, I have a hard time with that, ask the Father. You need healing, yes. <laughs> You know, ask the Father, yeah, he's got to heal you, and ask him to help you. So he always wants to help us. Yes. I'm going to share. So. Come on, Jerry. Go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had come to the Deliverance Center once, had a one-on-one -on -one with Julie and Kelly B, 
And then mm-hmm. I think it was my third time that I was, you know, came to the altar. He had come over and prayed with me. And then after it was apparent that that was it for the night, you just gave me this warm embrace. Mm-hmm. And you were standing there, and I and you just held me with such love. And I I walked away so touched by that. And that was I've never experienced love like that from a stranger. Mm-hmm. They make me cry, Christina. <laughs> um, so I shared a little bit of my testimony of how I was hurt a lot. And I praise God for the women, the strangers, that um, ministered to me through hugs and um, words of encouragement. Um, just, just saying... Hi, how are you? I'm so glad you came. And a smile. You know, that brings healing. The Bible says, they will know you by your love. By your love. So, um, I didn't always know the Father's love, and I'm still growing in that. I think we always will grow until were taken uh, to be with him in heaven. So be patient with yourself and um, ask God to teach you how to love. Te- because really, we can't, if we try to love from ourselves, we're going to do it wrong. <clears throat> and uh, we'll mess it up and we could cause more hurt than good. Um, you have an idea, oh, this is how I should do it. That's you know, ask God, say, God, just show me how to do that. And it's through, he's going to love you and you, he teaches you about love as he loves you. And then you're able to, to give that out. Yeah. There's a lot of lovers in this room. So I know I'm not even, I don't know. I'm speaking to the YouTubers. So, um, yeah. Brother P, you got one more thing? One more thing. Sorry. Okay. And just to help you guys, because it's just me, from what I've learned, is like, I think, I don't hug women. I don't like. Work. I don't do a lot of work. I cast spirits out of women, but I don't really hug them and do that thing like I do with dudes because yeah. I think you shouldn't. I think women should work with women and dudes should work with dudes when you're embracing, hugging stuff. Mm-hmm. Or the way I do, a woman might take it kind of weird, you know. Thank you. I, and I wanted to say that appropriate touch. Yeah. yeah. Good. So bringing me back down, my last point, and then I'll hand it over to. Uh, to Joe. So, um, appropriate touch. So yeah, women to women, that's, uh, I would say that's 90% of the, I say 90% of the time because, um, I don't know, you know, I'm glad to be older. One of the blessings of getting older is if you're, if you could be my child, then I can touch you. (laughs) That's how I feel. (laughs) Um, when I was a new teacher, I was in my 20s, and those kids, you know, high schoolers, teenagers, they were just a little too close in age to me, so I didn't feel like I could hug them and, and be, but now, um, you know, 20 years old, that's, that could be my child right there, <laughs> so, um, I, I, but I'm very, co- I'm very aware I'm a woman, and I need to be careful. Um, we give side hugs, you know, that kind of thing. But even just putting a hand on a shoulder. Okay, shoulder is good to touch the opposite sex or the forearm. Just a touch like that. Maybe the middle of their back, a light touch. You're not going to do one of these. No, you're not going to do that. Okay. Um, You know, a lot of times I'll hug women from the side because I'll just let them you know, cry and, and, and that, that is, that's, I don't know. God loves it. I think he loves it because it's, I've seen a lot of healing through that type of, of hugging. And so anyway, guys, yeah, if you have that, the father's heart, you know, and, and you hug a man, you know, God will teach you how to do it. And women, I mean, I'm talk. I know most every woman in here and I know you guys are great huggers and lovers, so I don't have to teach you anything. But just encourage you, yeah, yeah, use that hugging anointing. Use that love that Father's given you. And love yourself, right? You have to love yourself. So appropriate touch. Yes. Um, you guys don't know who Caroline Heath is? Yes, uh, yes. You know what it is? Under her book, she talks about the number one cause of death in the world mm-hmm. is lack of love. 
You know, so people die from heart attacks and other diseases, but their cause of that is love of you know lack of love because God made us to be to love and, and be loved. Yeah. You know, so that's why it's so important we're talking about right now for us to be able to be used by God by our, by our words by our mouth to give that touching touch to that person. Because you know we we may be loved and we may be okay, but we don't know if that person comes into this place. Yeah. I'm yeah. working harder than that. Yep. Yep. And if you don't know how much God loves you. You're going to have a hard time loving other people. That's true. Yeah. If you will not receive God's love, how can you give His love? Or if you have wrong mindsets about who He is. Yes. Like religious mindsets. Right. Yes. He said, I am your ever present help in time of trouble. Ever present, always present always wants to help always he's collecting your tears he's um i was last tuesday and i'll finish with this little story i was uh i don't know i think it was last tuesday i don't remember when it was but i i kind of got a quick image of my mind of the father um, cheering for us like a dad on the sidelines at a soccer game very excited and cheering their kid on who's you know about to make the goal and that's that's our father in heaven he is so excited he's cheering for us he wants us to win he wants us to be healed he wants us to be delivered he wants us to be successful he wants that for us he's a perfect father and he leads us in paths of righteousness. He restores our soul. He can, he's trustworthy. We, not so trustworthy. We're not so faithful, but he's always faithful. And we can, can trust him in every situation. Even like today, I'm on my walk. I'm thinking, I'm going to be a consumer today, training. I get the call and... I haven't been feeling so good this last week, and I, and I could have said, no, I don't think I'm up to it. But I was just like, no, yeah, I'll do it, sure. Lord, you tell me what to say. <laughs> we'll just go for it and have fun. So I'm glad. Well, I've taken up 10 more minutes than I planned. I want to introduce to you my very good friend, Joe Torag. We've seen him pray, and he's actually um, got a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge. He knows the Word of God. He knows the love of the Father. He uh, cares about people. And um, I hope he shares from his heart and doesn't hold back today. Amen. Yep. <laughs> Let's give it up for Joe. Yay! Woo! Yeah. Thanks. All right. I was kind of hoping that Julie would say something like, he's just getting started, and um, he's prayed for a couple people, and uh, occasionally he picks up the Bible. Now i got to live up to that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Occasionally he needs help. <laughs> Later, brother. Um, actually, let me get my notepad. All right. So, wow. Um, yeah. So last minute, I find out I'm asked to do this, or Mike could cancel. I'm thinking cancel, cancel. Um, so I'm like, well, maybe I'll be in front of a bunch of new people, then I could just tell them, you know, what it's like to just get started. You don't know what you're doing. You just pushed out there, and I'm surrounded by veterans and teachers. Thanks for coming, Dave. <laughs> I've never met. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm. I, I don't know where to start. I. I'll say one, one obstacle I have continually because I had a uh, struggle with, I guess maybe I should give you a little bit of my testimony. Um, so I grew up, I was the youngest of 
six kids. And so I kind of had, um, you know, my five siblings and two parents. I basically had seven parents. And so real easy for rejection to get in there, confusion. None of them agree with each other, but they're all telling you how you should live your life, or my life. So that's how it started. So I had a performance spirit, and I was raised Roman Catholic. Um, uh, I'm going to try to keep this really short. So um, I went to uh, undergrad at the U of A, went to dental school in Colorado, dropped out was dealing with depression, I tried to get help with the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. And they couldn't help me. Um, I was put on Zoloft, which I didn't want to do. I, had, I knew enough about biochemistry in my background that they don't know what they're doing. But I was so desperate, and I was struggling with it, this. And so I got on that. Zoloft is an SSRI. It's kind of like Prozac. Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So it's supposed to help you with a lot of things, depression. So I got on that. I dropped out of dental school. I thought, you know what, I've been walking the straight line. Maybe that's my problem. Um, I need to just relax. So I got, I started drinking. I got heavily involved in bad behavior. And um, eventually, uh, oh, and then I got into New Age. I was in martial arts and did all this stuff, you know, which of course opens doors for a flood of demons to get into your mind, into your body. And um, eventually I got to AA. After 14 years in AA, I realized that um, something, I needed something else. I was introduced to Christ through one of my sponsors. And... Um, but it was almost like another Jesus. There's other Jesuses out there. They look very similar, but they're not. They're not. And, and you won't know that unless you start reading the Bible. I'm like, well, this doesn't line up with Scripture. So um, I think I somehow, by the grace of God, I was introduced to um, Frank Hammond's teachings, Derek Prince. And I started thinking, um, oh, at some point, I guess I thought evil was just absence of knowledge. I thought the only reason there's evil in the world is people are, they don't know. But then um, I realized um, at some point, uh, I realized that evil was not lack of knowledge. Evil was a person. Um, because they're just things that were, I couldn't explain. The way people make decisions, you give them all this information and they still make bad decisions. It's like you, you're, you're not accepting, you're not receiving the love of the truth. You don't have the love of the truth. And I felt in a way I was struggling with that. And then, um, but when I was reading Derek Prince, I'm like, and I'm studying the Bible, I'm like, what? Demons are, I thought that was a psychological explanation, you know, they're actually people without bodies. Well, they're not people. Like Mike said, my people are humans. Okay, they're persons, persons. without bodies. Okay. Why don't you correct me soon? Oh, you're giving me grace. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, eventually I, I got in touch with Mike November 10th, 20. 18. And um, first, I got to say, <clears throat> no shame in tears. Thank God for Tracy Smith. I met her once. That's 
And uh, Tracy Smith is Mike's daughter. And uh, I know God has various ways to save his children, but if, it, if she didn't choose to come back from death to life, because that's what I understand. I believe her testimony. There'd be no Mike Smith. I mean, maybe God would have used somebody else, but I, I'm thanking Tracy Smith. You saved my life. Because you saved your father's life. Okay, so I met Mike and uh, in Tucson. He had a uh, he introduced me to somebody down there, um, Danny Morales, and uh, he works with Teen Challenge. And so I started hanging out with Danny Morales and seeing how they pray for people. And um, they did some deliverance. And eventually, that led me to come to do a one-on-one -on -one here. Um, and uh, Rick interviewed me. And um, after that one interview, Mike asked me to participate, to be on the team. I didn't understand why. but So that's, that was in uh, tw like May 2019. And of course, all of you that have worked with Mike know that once you get your deliverance, a lot of times he'll pick you out if he sees, he, he checks your heart. If you have a good heart, I think, I don't know why. Mike, Mike has good discernment and he doesn't let everybody on the team, but he'll say, okay, why don't you join the team? And you think, okay, um, where's the, uh, you know, the training book? No. The, the, the training's in that room. You hear that screaming? Go in there. <laughs> Just throws you in there and um, go pray. And so um, you've got to learn. I had to learn my own technique or whatever you want to call it, the technique. And um, I was trying, with my background, um, biochemistry, electrical engineering. I like to, I like to study things first, then go to the lab. Mm -hmm. No, Mike just says, "Here's the lab. Go, go start playing with some chemicals. See what blows up. Don't do that again." And you know, blows up in your face. You know, just take responsibility for it, but don't be hard on yourself. You know, go ahead and screw up a lot. Um, <laughs> learn from your mistakes. Um, so I think with me. Uh, I know that we often do a lot of things differently, each minister, and we're comfortable with doing some things that others aren't. And sometimes we, we, we base our advice to others on our experience. But I try to be careful for that with that because what, like, um, I know Pete, you don't, you don't hug women. I hug women sometimes. And when they start complaining, then I, okay, I won't do that again. But I, nobody's, comp I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I can't make hard, fast rules, which is frustrating because with my background in science, you have rules. You have, you can't, you can't, you got to operate with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's right. But how can you do that? If you're not in the Word, the whole purpose, the whole purpose of deliverance, in my opinion, is not so that your life gets better. So when I'm ministering to somebody, um, I'm trying to remember, I, I don't want them just to get better and comfortable again so they can go back to the world. I try to remember 
that the primary purpose of deliverance is to help you get one step closer to Jesus. Amen. And if you remember that, not only will grace cover your mistakes, God will make you look good. But you have to remain humble because the devil will know that too. And he'll try to say, hey, look how good you are. You're ready to step, step up on the stage and start teaching. He'll, he's so, God, he perverts everything. But he can't do it if you keep, stay humble, stay loving. Um, so when I start off, um, I know I'm speaking to a lot of people that you've, you've already got your style. I know we got YouTubers, but um, I personally, I try to locate people. There, there's a difference between one-on-ones where you have a couple hours and the altar call. So early on, um, I had to create this picture in my mind because there's times when I had scripture that I've known I could, I could repeat at any time of the day. But when I went into the, into the uh, large sanctuary where there, there's all this screaming and yelling and shouting and get out, get out of there, get up, you know, it's like I can't remember that scripture early on. Now it's a little different, but, but early on it was like that. And so I had to paint this picture on how to do like a two minute interview with people that are at the altar call. Um, so I try to ask them, uh, is this your first time here? Have you done deliverance before? If they've done deliverance before, then I'm like, oh shoot. Uh, they know too much. They might know too much. They know more than me, right? So. Like, oh, what I was, I'm going to back up. What I was going to say about when you're start, starting ministry, um, some of us have this problem. I have this, this issue where um, if somebody is confident in what they're saying, I tend to back down, right? And so God is helping me to overcome that and see that just because this person's a pastor of a church, and I'm ministering to them, and they're confident, and they think they know what spirit they have, I'm going to reach deep down inside. And just trust that I may not have his ability, may not have his skills, I'm only here as a yielded vessel to the best of my ability. My job is to be available. Amen. And so even, I, you know, I've talked to people that are very confident. They know what they're, they think, you know, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do a little ministry to them. And they're like, once I feel like they're, they're not receiving, there's other people I could pray for. or It's time to pack it up and go home because... I, I'm not doing them help by co-signing their BS. And the, the, but I can help somehow. You know, I can. So, so that's one thing. Is when, just because somebody's confident doesn't mean, you know, what, what can I do? I can pray for them. I could ask for somebody else. But um, so that's when you're just starting out. Yes, go ahead. So, um, how do you move when you realize the person's not receiving? What is your method? <laughs> I've gotten better at trying, I've gotten better at praying for multiple people, but in the beginning, I could not move away from one person. And then, um, you know, Erica. Could you give me an example? Well, hey, if I start praying with somebody, I'm there till the end, till the lights are coming on. I didn't know how to move. Move on. Okay, so. Uh, so how do you do that? Like when you notice, okay, this person is yeah. receiving. 
sniff peace out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you do? How do you mm. handle that situation so you can move on to other people? So for me, I, I try to develop new habits by just doing it, even if it's uncomfortable. Like maybe I should stay with them, but I want to get out of this habit of just, so I'll just say, I'll be right back. And I'll walk away and then I'll come back. Because you're, you're, you're changing your behavior, right? Or I'm changing my behavior. Um, so, yeah, I had this, this issue early on where I'm like, okay, I got to pray for as many people as possible. How you doing? What's your problem? Okay. Oh, God bless you. All right. You know, <laughs> right? Because you already took up 30 seconds. My, we're, the altar call is almost over. Right? I'm panicking. Like, yeah. And other times, I'm like, my gosh, I'm, I've been with this person for 20 minutes. But then you come to realize, no, this person is repentant. Why am I jumping around to all these people that are just like this? <laughs> yeah, I, I got a kundalini. Can you, can you knock that out? I, I got, um, you know. Quality over quantity, right? Quality. quantity. over quantity. Right. But that's something you have to just by screwing up a lot. <laughs> and learning, hopefully learning from your screw-ups. So, yes. And one thing that I, I do sometimes if I'm working with someone and they don't, they're not getting deliverance, and like five, ten minutes goes by, that's, that's uncomfortable. It's like kind of a downer, actually. Especially if you get three of those in a row. But what I'll do is I'll just say, hey, I think maybe you're, you got some you're, you're unforgiveness, you're holding something against something, the demon has something on you. Have you done the miracle that's Matthew 5, 44? Have you worked through that all? And usually they say, no. I say, well, hang on. I'll run and get them on and I'll say, hey, Let's work on this. I even send it through dudes and say, hey, you can go to Julie's class. You can watch it online if you have any questions. It's a perfect thing to point them to because then they can work through it. Actually, you don't have to get stuck. And then come back and see us again and move on to the next person. That's kind of what I do. Good. It works out good. I, I think uh, what helped me early on is... When I first started, there were so many veterans that it was easy for me to ask for help. Once you've been here a while, sometimes you, I'm not supposed to be asking help. I'm supposed no, ask anybody. Hey, hey, can you? I'm having a block right here, and you know you you've got the corporate anointing, but you can also bring someone else's anointing. That's right. And and it takes the pressure off of you. Yes. Oh, sorry. I just, I was going to wait my turn. I don't oh. want to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, well, something I think I want to, I, I want to share about kind of generally what we're talking about is, um, you know, we're all on a path of um, learning God's ways and walking in the spirit and discerning things in the spirit. So, I mean, I, I've known the Lord now for about 20 years, but, you know, I perceive that over time, you know, if I lay hands on someone or if I'm praying some for someone, there are things that can be discerned in the spirit as you're praying for them. You can sense how their spirit is receiving the prayer or their soul is receiving the prayer. You can sense if they're resisting it. Um, as a sidebar to that, you know, I for like 15 years of my walk now, I can look at a publication if I'm out somewhere and I can instantly tell if it's not a Christian publication. I can feel it in the spirit. And then I pick it up and sure enough, it's like Jehovah's Witnesses of this and that. Probably all of you can do that, but it's like we have to practice letting the Holy Spirit allow us to discern those things. You know what I mean? Or, or watching what is the Holy Spirit trying to do. If I'm not just having my mental experience of reality, I have the mind of Christ, and Christ is trying to do something in me. You know what I mean? And sometimes mm -hmm. it's even a thought. The other day I was communicating with a friend. She's kind of backslidden. And the Lord suddenly brought a lyric of a, of a song to my mind, and I'm trying to encourage her to walk with the Lord. I send her that song. She goes, I used to lead that song in the church. I said, well, that's probably why the Lord just brought it to my mind. You know, it's things like that that he really is actively working in our experience with others and reality and and right. Okay. So, thank you. Yes. One more quick thing on that. No, what she's saying. That is a guy here. He's not here today, but he's he's not on our team. But he's 
I'm sure he will be soon. He has just incredible discernment. My wife has good discernment too, but she's doing other things. I always grab him and have him follow me around, and I always ask him, go, what do you think, bro? And he goes, oh, this is, and he's always dead on. You know, he's got that. I think because I'm busy praying with the dude, and I, I have trouble. You, you mean dead on, like discernment. interpreting what you're? The discerning of... He has killer discernment minus... Discerning of spirits or just discernment? Just, just discernment. What's troubling? I was asking, what's troubling? He goes, last Thursday night, he goes, it's his dad. Okay. He won't forgive his dad. I'm like, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. That's, yeah, so that's well, why... Grab something that can help you. Yeah. Right, that's why... Um, it's nice to get started when you're working with the team. Mm -hmm. um, like I don't know how I would direct somebody that's just getting started and they go back and do deliverance um, without experiencing you know having that backup I guess yeah. um, so I can only explain you know based on my experience um, but yeah somebody that's just learning whether you're on YouTube whatever and I guess, I guess you just got to remember that you're not alone. He who created all these things is in you. Amen. So, uh, yes? Did you talk about the hand chart yet? No. Um, yeah, I'll get, I'll, 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 go to, I'll get to that. So, about locating people. So, I'll, I'll ask... Um, so you got like two minutes. You don't want to take too much time because you don't have that much time to get these spirits out. So I think with, uh, with the altar call, you can't, it's very hard to get the controllers out, right? But my mindset is get enough spirits out that they recognize um, that they the value of, de uh, of deliverance yeah. that, they, that they'll come back. Um, and maybe try to get them to register that you're not going to, like I used to think when I first was introduced to deliverance, um, I'm going to get these spirits out and then I'm going to, like in a, just a one hour session or 10 minute session, just kick them out. And, but they're on, most, a lot of us, they're on and they come on in layers, like in the hand chart. Yeah. Well, I'll explain it in a second as best I can. But, um, and then the the one you know the the one on ones that we have here, where you're interviewing one somebody, where it's more intimate, um, then you can you don't have to start kicking demons out. You could spend maybe an hour just talking or letting them talk. Um, you just sit there, talk, let them talk, and maybe ask some questions, but. Um, Again, that I'm still working on that. That takes a lot of screw ups. Like, <laughs> it, it's nice to learn when somebody, a, a veteran, is with you. Um, so, it's, it's all. Jesus says, Where, "Wherever one is gathered in my name." No, he said, "Wherever two or three are gathered in my name." So it's always, I mean, best to work with someone else filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, so, yeah, so what I ask them, I actually, I haven't been doing that lately. I wish I did it last night, but it, it worked out. Um, yeah, how much deliverance, how, do, how much do you know about deliverance? And then, um, you want to get to the root cause, right? So, you can you can't get to everyone in two minutes, so you just, like, who hurt you? Like Julie explained, who hurt you? Who, is, who hurt you when you were young, right? Um, and if you just focus on who hurt you when you were young and how, what's your relationship like with your parents, those two, I think you'll, you'll go far at a two-minute, you know, at the altar call. Um, and... Follow the emotions. Um, Mike always talks about how the emotions are the thermometer to the soul. And 
you start asking people, so uh, anybody hurt you? Uh, yeah, my brother, but I forgave him. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> brother. Um, all right, who else hurt you? My sister. Um, okay. How are you doing with your sister? Oh, we're good. We talk like every other day and we're, okay, okay. Um, probably brother is a good start. <laughs> so you forgave your brother, but you have ought. You have negative feelings towards him. So you follow that. And then um, try to make sure that they're relaxed. You know, try to keep, and these people are tense and stuff and even when you're casting out demons, you know, just try to get them. I don't know why, but it seems that people get deli more deliverance when they're relaxed. And um, and then the last thing I do is I try to leave them with something. Gift of tongues, handouts. Um, are you working on the miracle list? Um, do you know the value of speaking in tongues? We have a glossa handout. Um, I try, uh, I don't know if we do this enough, the, the uh, Satan's counterattack. Mm -hmm. Talking about not, um, I don't know if this is true, but it seems to be true to me. Once you get spirits out, mm -hmm. certain spirits out, and they come back in, it's harder to get them back out. Mm -hmm. Not because it's sevenfold worse. I don't think it's that. It's just the person gets disappointed. They lose their fight. I don't know what it is, but I try to get people to remember, hey, they're going to try to get back in within 48 hours is what we've been taught here. And so I try to get them to realize, hey, be on guard. But don't be afraid <laughs> either. How do you be on guard and not be afraid? So... Um, so I try to leave them with something. Uh, so what I found um, is that not probably 90% of Christians have a rejection spirit. And so when I, when I first learned about this, uh, this hand chart by uh, item A, Hammond. Um, I don't know if I should reveal this or not. <laughs> um, because it's in, it's in the chapter called Schizophrenia. And I don't want people to think I'm accusing them of having schizophrenia. No. When she first was introduced to the hand chart, this, I'm basing this on some things that I've heard from their teachings. Uh, it was like a last minute thing. Ida Mae presented it to her husband, Frank, and said, hey, I've got this, this message from God. Can you put that in your, in your book? And they were originally dealing with a woman that was, um, I don't know if she had full-blown schizophrenia, but she had some symptoms that God led, them, led Ida Mae to believe, hey, what she has is schizophrenia. Um, a, another soul. Dipsychus means two souls. Um, I know the Bible, it says you have uh, double-minded, double minded, right? Thank you. Thank you for that. So it's not, a, it's not a, an appropriate, well, in a way it's appropriate because you're dealing with your mind, that other person's mind that's trying to impersonate you, then you've got the mind of Christ, you've got all this stuff going on, right? And so she was a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, and, um, and so they were trying to minister to her. So Frank Hammond, uh, later on, years later, explained that he, he, to his surprise, found out that some of these spirits were in him. Not all of them, but so he started to realize, no, what it is, is that this is the network and infrastructure that the devil's trying to build, in my opinion, in every single human being. 
And so if you tell me you don't have fear, I'm not going to believe you. If you don't have, you've never had a fear spirit. He, I, I think he starts off with fear. He starts off with the rejection, which is the controller that kind of, he kind of, he's, he's not like really active in battle. He's like a general. He's not out in the front line. Now, this is all speculation, right? Just to say that. I don't have biblical scripture to support this. But it's speculation on how, trying to understand how this operates. And from, based on my experience and from what I've been taught, that he starts introducing these other spirits. So let me back up. So Frank Hammond found out that you should memorize. He, I remember him saying, if you're, if you're going through the pigs in the parlor uh, groupings, does everybody know about the groupings? If you go through that, somebody told him, hey, I went through all the groupings. I was casting out devils, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, shame on you. You're supposed to follow the Holy Ghost. Well, later on, and I thought, well, that's true. But later on, Frank Hammond says, I think you should memorize the hand chart. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're supposed to memorize these or not memorize, supposed to buy, go by the Holy Ghost. I think, I think it's okay to, for me, what I do is I create kind of a pattern because I, I don't know what I'm doing. I need something to fall back on, right? So at some point, for my own purposes, I memorized this whole hand chart for myself. And because I was desperate. When you're desperate, you'll do some weird things. You, you will do some things that, that in, the, in the end, God will use. Um, So, when I heard that message, I thought, I'm going to try this. I'm going to start using this hand chart when I'm ministering to people. I know they don't have mental illness. So, it shouldn't work, right? Oh my God. I start casting out vivid imagination, working with lies. I start casting out... Uh, Root of bitterness, working with rebellion, and they're just, blah, blah. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wow. Now, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm going through all these methodically. Um, I'm trying to explain to people, hey, uh, if I tell you I'm casting out murder, I'm not saying you have a murder, that you murdered someone. I'm just saying you might have some resentment, bitterness, retaliation, and a spirit of murder somehow got in. He wants to drive you to murder. If you have a spirit of suicide, it doesn't mean you're dead. You didn't commit suicide. And can't, you know. So I try to explain these things because some people, if they'll get offended if I... To this day, people that have done ministry uh, deliverance, I'll, I'll say something and I'm like, I don't have that. I don't do that. And so if they get offended, that's a blocker. The deliverance stops. If I offend them, deliverance. So I have to gain their trust. And that's, that's the main thing is you want people to trust you. And if you're operating in love, I think people are going to trust you. But you're going to make mistakes, and even though you're being loving, they'll still get offended. They might be a plant. They might. I don't. Anyway, so, so the way this operates, of course, if you haven't understood it, is basically I will bind self-pity working with rejection, root of bitterness working with rebellion, And then I'll go from there. Um, You'll say those exact words like I find working. Yeah, I try not to be religious about it. At first I was because uh, it's hard to hear. It's hard to operate for me. Or at least it felt, felt like it was hard for me to operate in the spirit 
when all I could hear was, I'm hearing everybody else. But after a while, you are so focused because you've screwed up enough to learn, right? Because you're not going to learn until you start screwing up. Um, it's almost like a process of elimination. Okay, don't use those. The, um, you got to learn your own technique. I was trying to do things like the way other people were doing it, other veteran ministers, and that's good. Start there, you know. Um, I try to, I try to do things like I would get in a comfort mode. I was using this, and then after a while, it stopped working, and I'm thinking. What's going on? Did I grieve the Holy Spirit? Did I? And I thought, well, God doesn't want to. If Jesus didn't heal people the same way with the same problem, blindness, Mike was talking about, you know, sometimes he would spit, sometimes he'd lay hands, sometimes he'd, he'd just say, Do you believe I can do this? Then, as you believe, receive your sight. So I believe it's the same way. And, and Frank Hammond talks about that, that sometimes you'll get the controller out and then all the, all the helpers will, will come out. And sometimes you'll get the helpers out and, sometimes, and then the controller will come out. And sometimes you'll cast out 20 spirits, nothing happens, then all of them come out. Now, how do you know that? I don't know. It just, I just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep. I have one. I have one for you. Yes. Uh, sometimes praying with people, I get these a lot, actually. <laughs> um, so I say I'm praying with a woman, and say the whole the whole issue is is with her boyfriend or her husband. It seems that they always will come over and latch on and be listening to the whole prayer, like blocking because they need to be cast out or that hurt or that she, they, the person you're ministering the will man, hug the, the man the person I'm ministering to their boyfriend or the mother will be like right in there oh okay. you know and they're right. actually the problem mm. so it's, it's yes. difficult to minister to them okay uh, you need to forgive your mother or your boyfriend but he because boyfriend is right there yeah right. so right there. so um, Sister Julie reminded me that I didn't know this at the healing house or, yes. or is it house of healing? Now I forget <laughs> the old place, the first ministry that Mike would say he would, he would do his teaching, give it a five minute break. And then he'd start deliverance, he said, okay, now if you came here with somebody, get on the opposite sides of the room from each other. Yeah. And we don't, I guess we don't do that. Um, but yeah, that's, I expect that's the reason. Yeah. Um, plus, of course, we know like in children's deliverance, mm -hmm. these spirits, if they receive comfort mm -hmm. from anyone, from the mother, they'll, it's harder to get them out. So you try to get the baby or infant, child, whatever, away from the, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think it's the same. Floor -wide. Like, or I'm praying with a woman and the abuser or boyfriend is like right there. Or the mother, the controlling mother is right there, you know? Yeah. And they don't, like, I want to tell them, go away. <laughs> I'll start looking for somebody, looking for Pete or someone to come pray with that person to separate them. Okay, that's great. Abuse, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I was thinking like, uh, am I am I going to answer your question? Because I don't have a, a, an answer, but you answered it. Yeah. So that's why you you do need to. Uh, how do you how can you be discreet? Mm -hmm. How do you maintain both people's trust? Mm -hmm. And so I guess I guess you'd go to another team member and say, hey, um, this family needs prayer. Can you take them and I'll take them. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Like, right. Yeah. I just, if I could just say, I had a situation where I had a little girl and her brother wanted to be right next to her. And it wasn't that particular brother that was the problem, but it was another brother in the family. 
and through the word of knowledge, God revealed that her issue had to do with abuse. And once mm -hmm. I got the brother away from her, she started to get deliverance. Right. Right. And that was difficult. Uh, I remember you were with me. And, and we kind of we had to get them separated because she didn't want to, I don't know, appear weak or tell what the real problem was or admit to it or whatever the pro whatever was going on. He was hindering. Yes. Yes. Right. So it, it's it's about. family. It's sometimes boyfriend. there was a little girl that used to come here and she hasn't mm -hmm. been here for a while, but the dad was that way too. Yes. Yeah. And I know there was abuse there, and I'm like, we need to go. You know. Yeah. Yes. He was afraid. Right. You could feel his fear. She's going to tell something. Yes. He was getting deliverance too. He was going through his thing. Right. But there was some. There was like a secret there that that he wasn't okay. letting. Yeah, yeah, that's been too much. Right for that kid. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I get those a lot. I'm kind of stumped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking for someone to come help or. So, and, and just a reminder. So, um, what we're discussing is like the the obstacles at altar call. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of this is resolved when you're doing one on ones. It's a lot easier. Is it, is, wouldn't it be fine to say something like to that person? And do you mind if I speak to her in private for a minute? Yeah. Because yeah. then you're like, it'd be really hard for someone to say no to that. Yeah, like, you know, or, or, or yes, I might, right? Like, that would be, you know, quite the quite the person to do that. So right. most of the time, they're going to say, yeah, then they're kind of disarmed, and they kind of rubber stamped it. So it's like, hey, yeah. do you mind if I just talk to her in private? Yeah. But I think on the on the flip Makes side, sense. if somebody else is going from person to person, praying for somebody, looking for somebody else, and you might just be aware that okay, we've got vultures. You know, she's praying, and I see a couple of vultures over there. Let me try to go. Hey, can I? So the person can minister to probably a lot of times it's someone younger or someone who's in who's been subject to a more subservient role in a relationship that you might even be able to pick up someone's being domineering mm -hmm. in the situation then now because you shared that word tuned to that I apologize I might not have a place to speak but no, of course you do careful <laughs> especially female to male if you're asking a male to leave right. they may stand up and get <laughs> Exactly, domineering, um, and uh, male to a woman, she may feel that you're pushing her away from her child or another, and it it wells up emotion in people that might be difficult to deal with alone. The the coming together, two two on two. Uh, Doing things singly, it just, I know from my experience, I'm, I'm a huge male, you're a huge male. It, just that appearance to somebody in a, a role where you're telling them what to do, could you please leave us alone? I wouldn't say it like that. Say like, be, do you mind, can you give us a, a moment of privacy? And I'm not talking about leaving the room. Yeah, I I'm just saying, that like, we're going to go. So that they can see, and you're being obviously considerate of them. You're not trying to like, you know, thumb your nose at them, but you know. I'm not saying you're doing the wrong thing. No, I'm, I'm saying their reaction might be unforeseen. Be, be prepared for that, of course, of course, because they're already they're already kind of being pushy as it is. <coughs> so it's a difficult situation, right. no matter what. And so. God will yeah. You. yeah. So. So. Right, right, right. Doesn't hurt to ask, right? Yeah. Right, right. So, so, but that. <laughs> so, so, just real quick. Um, Christina has. Robert. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I get you. Just a second, Christina. So, so. I know Kelly knows the answer. That was good. Um. Hmm. Sorry. So I'm reflecting on Robert Fisher, taught me a lot, and he would say, you know, when you're praying for somebody, you really can't screw it up. You're, 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 you can't, really can't screw up deliverance. But 
I was reflecting on that more and more over time, and I'm thinking, you know how we, when we make statements, we're basing them on our own experience and our own personality. Robert is a loving person. I don't think you can use that with every minister. Some ministers, that's, they're going to screw up because of their personality. Stinks. <laughs> yeah. So they shouldn't be in deliverance ministry. So, um, but, but he, he reminded me of something else that no matter how much you want to help this person, you, your face may look like somebody that hurt them or they don't know why so if you're if you can't help someone don't t uh, it's hard not to but try not to take it personally it might not be you it's just it's the shirt you're wearing something anything right because it's not you and it's not them it's the spirits in them trying to get them to not trust you mm -hmm. or not trust the process so does that make sense right now that's a good point and a lot of times those spirits are looking oh. at any little thing to find wrong, to take offense to. Right, right. Christina. Oh, yeah. It's just when we go back to get our badges, uh, Kelly's going to order us some flags that we put in our back pocket. And when we're having trouble, oh, we just... Oh. Oh. Yeah. And, and that way, when we have a yes. pause in what we're doing, we can look around and see if any flags are being... <laughs> yes. Oh. Is that what it's for? I thought I thought it's like you're hearing somebody saying, what, what'd you say? You're out of line. <laughs> That's it. Two more. You're out. <laughs> no, that is good. What color are they going to be? Green. Green. Can you see that in the uh, glow in the dark? Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes we need help. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to say something, Christina. I was in a 24 hour prayer um, center, and they actually had the different colors. So, like, if somebody was like maybe suicidal and you weren't first on that, you could hit the flag one way and red would be there. And so, actually, oh, it worked. I know it's not the same knowledge. application, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question where I've seen. And it's not necessarily on the hand, uh, but the Holy Spirit may reveal when I see people uh, maybe holding a person's nose, or um, I know like there may be constrictor spirits and you know maybe their head or mind control or um, oh, you, mean, you mean like where to lay your hands and stuff? Yeah, Is I that... to, but I see it looks like you're holding their nose, like the like I don't know so, what this all about. Okay, so <laughs> just speculation on my part. I do that sometimes because I'm following Mike. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know why I would be doing it though. I so we know I'm that sure the brain, it. the brain is attached to the sinuses, oh, the sinuses. and your and your sinuses. I mean, the uh, there's many sinuses, but I know that when we're doing deliverance, a lot of people drain okay. spirits come out that way. I don't know if that's why. Um, Sometimes it doesn't matter why does it work. I, 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 my pro, like I said, my background is learning f things through uh, models and then going out into the real world. And we don't do that here. <laughs> we, don't, uh, we don't see the spirit. I mean, a lot of this, is it speculation? I don't know, but it works for me. I guess I consider that. Yeah. So, um... He does that with fear spirits. Oh, fear. Fear. Yeah, right here. Oh, fear spirits, spirit. specifically. Fear spirits. Here and, and in the gut. Okay. Anxiety. He will do anxiety. Um, okay. Anger. But I know for sure fear and, yeah. Right. What does that do? Yeah, it, it, like, aggravates them. It stirs them up. Oh. <coughs> and sometimes he'll sometimes he'll come sometimes he'll come right close to you to stir up the spirits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. 
You know, mentioned a, you know, cast out a murder spirit. I remember this one guy was cast out of Even though he didn't commit the murder, come to find out his dad did. So we know that the spirits, they hit the kids. So that's what happened. So that can happen too. Right, generational. Generational spirits. Tra transfer spirits. Um... So, um, I probably don't need to cover this to you, um, but of course, our ministry is is our our uh, foundation is repentance, forgiveness, those two. But I think we take it, take another thing for granted. So a, a third component um, we don't really mention, which is renewing the mind. So my understanding, um, and please, when, I'm, when I explain this, you can fill in the gaps, maybe. So uh, first of all, repentance. Some people, um, they, they committed a sin, for, for example, abortion. They know it's wrong after they commit it. Um, and I've, I had to read a book and study it and read some case studies. That's where I'm getting this from. That I've, I've learned that you can, you can, so God says, uh, the word of God says, he who covers his sin shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So some people have forsaken their sins, but they haven't confessed it as a sin to God. I don't know why that's necessary in some cases, but I read a case where a woman had an abortion, but she, once she confessed it as murder, she got free of that guilt. She got free of that shame. She got those wounds healed. Just by, I mean, she already repented. Now, most, a lot of cases, I see the problem, people are, they're confessing their, their sins. Uh, I'm watching porn. Okay, you confess that it's, it's a sin, yes. Okay, so you stop. No, I, I, I still can't. Um, okay, <laughs> so you're not repenting. You just said you're repenting. Those are just words. So, Repentance, two components. The other two components are, um, or, I'm sorry, the other one is uh, forgiveness. And of course, we know there's, you've, you release the person, they don't owe me anything. I still don't like them. I still have, have bad feelings about, well, now you still got ought. Right. So you, you have to say, they don't owe you anything. I don't want justice for them. Because right. if, I, if I want justice for them, Justice is going to come on me, and I don't want that. I want mercy. And you have to not expect an apology. Right. And it's hard. And sometimes you have to, the enemy keeps coming back, memory recall spirits, right? Um, and then the third, of course, is renewing the mind. But that's, that takes time. That takes reading the Word and making sure you're not reading out of the NIV. It, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Amen. Any modern version? Any modern version? <laughs> Texas for Bible's no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The nearly inspired version is okay to read, but just, just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I retract that. Can we? Where's Kelly? <laughs> Rewind that. Um, but yeah. So and and then of course, fellowship, renewing the mind. Don't just. Anyway, that's a whole Bible study. How to renew the mind? I think. Anyway, yes, sir. Point, you had a question, sir? Oh, I just want to say sin is corruption, corruption of the heart. When the heart comes corrupted, then it gets worms and stuff. It starts growing and it grows and it grows and anger and all. And the devil comes to live in the, in the, in the dirt, in the nastiness of your heart. Mm -hmm. But if you purify your heart, and it's hard to do it until you start practicing it and say, Lord, I give this to you. And, and I learned just by God asking me, hey, can I have that, all that crap in your heart? And I said, really? Just take it, please. And I still started rejoicing in the Lord. I changed my mind. Uh, I, I re let all that stuff go that was 
burdened me down. And then when I was free, then the spirit was free to live through me and in me. And I just try to be a light with compassion to others. If I don't have love for others, I can't do nothing for nobody. It right. So, love. so, um, so we get rid of the sin in our So, heart. so be spiritual too. Right. But, but what I'm trying to explain is how do you minister to people oh, over through the power of the Holy Spirit? We okay. walk in faith. We walk in the spirit. Not only are we led by the spirit, but we walk in the spirit. And if we're walking in the spirit, then that's the light of the world. Okay. And the okay. darkness can't overcome the light. We overcome the darkness in the light. Right. And sometimes that takes praying for those who despitefully use you. And right. Keep it for the name of Jesus, for what you believe. Uh, loving people that hate you. Uh, doing good to those who, who steal and take from you. Do it just returning. Just keep healing away at it. Sometimes it takes forever. Sometimes it takes what it takes. But are you willing? How far are you willing to go? How much are like Mike said? How much are you willing to give? Are you willing to become a living sacrifice? Uh, now, also, you got you got. Uh, Okay, so what so what you're saying is basically, uh, what you're what you're what you're saying what you're saying is basically supporting what I'm talking about. That issue of you can get people to repent and forgive, but how do you get them? How do you how do you how do you get them to actually? Repent by confessing is, Christ is their Lord and Savior, saying, Lord, I need you every day. Amen. I can't live without you. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, back to um, deliverance training. Um, any other questions? We still got, what, half an hour? So, yes. What's that? I think that forsaking thing is great because that's something that's not on the forefront of my mind, even though I may have done it. But that's homework that we can give people is say, okay, you've repented. Now you've got to forsake it. Like you can't pick up that offense. You can't pick up that bitterness. You right. can't, oh, start being critical of them because they remind you of this, that, or another. You have to like forsake it. Like it's gone, right? And that's that's why you, that's a good word. For you me. know, in what is it? Hebrews twelve uh, talks about. Um, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and I interpret that. I ha I try to. Sometimes uh, the Bible is so simple, I don't get it because of my background. I I right auto. What do you call it? Uh, Overprocessing. I have to start inserting words. Okay, what if I put a different word? Yeah. Oh, now I see what it doesn't say. So I think when it says, lay aside every weight in the sin that so easily ensnares us, it says, lay aside every weight that so easily ensnares us and the sin that so easily ensnares us. So not all of our behavior is sinful, but it can it can choke the word. Distract you. It could it could lead you back into sin. It could um, just lead you into discouragement. It could lead you to start having. <sighs> so, we talk about doubt and unbelief. Um, the Word of God says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So where does doubt come from? We often think doubt's a spirit or doubt's, well, where does doubt come from? And I think doubt also comes from hearing and hearing the Word of the God of this age or the news, the world creates doubt. Uh, I heard Andrew Womack explain it that you know, 2,000 years ago, it might have taken a year for negative news to get from one side of the world to the other. Now it takes seconds for negative information to get to our ears. Yeah. And so our problem is not whether we receive information or not. It's having the discernment where, you know, I, I ain't getting on Facebook. I, I keep getting triggered. I keep, I keep, but, but the hard part is not making that a religious statement for others. Just because it's bad for you, don't start telling others, hey, you got to stay off Facebook. That's evil. 
Back off. Come on. <laughs> and so, yes, ma'am. Oh, no, I, I don't want to interrupt your thought. I'm just. So, um, so there's a lot of things I have to cut out of my life just because I keep thinking, man, how did I get back in there? And I have to backtrack it. Sometimes you got to figure out how did you get here? Why? So you don't do it again. But you have to learn your own behavior. Learn the, not the wiles of the devil on how he's operating on others. How is he working on you? It's tailored to your own affections. He's constantly like God. He uses the same so, lies and devices on others as he uses on you. Okay. So I thank, thank you for those of you who are... Um, want to share for raising your hand first. So yes, go ahead. So um, I definitely think, you know, in this walk with Christ and being conformed into his image and actively, you know, letting him flow through us, etc. We've got a renewing of the mind, thought, actions, etc. So one thing that, that I feel the Lord showed me about 15 years ago that's been revolutionary in my life, and some people, if they pick it up in their lives, they say, oh, they come back to me and say it's been revolutionary is to like find a scripture that speaks to the specific area you need healing in, you need deliverance in, you need to stop sinning in, and choose to take that one or two scriptures and personalize it, meditate on it, do the biblical meditation where you like walk through a scripture and decide at every point as you're thinking through it, do I believe this? Yes, I really believe this and have that be a foundational thing instead of whatever thought or action that's not of God. So in my case, like for instance, I at some point had to decide, do I really believe God is a good God? I'm going through all this pain, loss, etc. Do I believe God is a good God? So for me, it was, does Hannah really believe John 16? So for God so loved Hannah, do I believe that? Do I literally feel in my spirit that I truly believe just those words, for God so loved Hannah? Yes, I do. Yes. That he gave, do I believe that? Yes, I believe he gave his only begotten son and truly believe the word and the word renews the mind, creates new neural pathways, creates changes in the spirit. And the other thing is you really can only think one thought at a time. You really can only think one thought at a time. So if that one thought you're thinking is on the word. Unless you have familiar spirits. <laughs> well, well, I've never thought another thought, but anyway, but maybe someone else. I don't mean you, I meant sure. that person. So, you know, I've had thank you to God, and it's like, so, so for me, I, I was delivered from like 20 years of depression by meditating on the Word. And any time I would feel any of it creep in, I would fixate on something about the Word, choose to believe it, and was healed in that. So I just, mm. in, in case anyone wants to try that, you might. So, so why did I say that? Because if someone's standing in front of you and they have one or two areas of sin and you're trying to minister, give them one or two scriptures. Say, here's your homework assignment, especially for the next 48 hours. Meditate on these scriptures. Believe these scriptures. You know, memorize them. And every time any thought creeps in that's not of the Lord, I want you to go right back to those scriptures. Amen. In case that helps anyone. So... That does help. Uh, actually, have you worked on the miracle list? No. Sir. No? So, um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, we use we used that in the miracle list. And um, the miracle list, we, we encourage people to use to weaken the spirits. In fact, is, is that the miracle list? Yes, thank you. Does it say, uh, oh, it doesn't have the introduction. Um, so trying to relate to people that these spirits, trying to convince people, persuade people, let them understand these spirits didn't come, jump on you overnight, right? If you're not sinning, I don't see how a spirit can just get on you, right? But we, but we were born in sin at the age of accountability. At some point after that, we sinned. We started now. Let me back up. Um, you can get spirits. Children can get spirits generational because they're defenseless, because the authority is not theirs. It's their parents 
and they go through, that's why some kids can be born with, with a spirit of homosexuality. They could be born with certain deformities, right? Behavioral. And behavioral issues. But um, for the most part, for, uh, for the rest of us, after that point, these spirits start layering. And so we try to, we, we can weaken them and hopefully these, whoever we're ministering to at the altar call will come. I, I basically, I'm kind of just focused on the altar call. Uh, you want them to come back. Um, a lot of people don't come back, so this is hard, but you, we, I keep trying to do the same thing, give them material, I may never see them again, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the, the miracle list, you know, works on, the first is, who hurt you? Uh, I think it's basically broken up in, in four sections. Uh, who hurt you? Um, what don't you like about yourself? What are the thoughts the enemy's putting in your head all the time? And I, I think the fourth is godly sorrow. And so, yeah, it, in the miracle list, we try to encourage people to take scripture and apply it to those negative thoughts that are coming in. And there's a problem with that because it seems like so many people come to this ministry and they don't even have a Bible, mm -hmm. which is no excuse if you have a smartphone. It's easy to, you know, but trying to get people in the Word and, well... Once, you, once they start working on the miracle list, they're, they're going to start searching the scriptures. Um, I think we need to not be afraid of, of asking people. Well, actually, we have a support group. Julie has a great support group um, and a lot of videos out there for working the miracle list. Um, so that's part of, you know. Uh, the, a precursor to renewing the mind. Um, anyway, yes, sir. Uh, right now, I'm working on being constant. You know, not not just doing deliverance in one place, but everywhere I go, I, I'm looking for someone to reach out with the love of Christ or to bring healing to. Right. And, and, and you know, it's just uh, like I said, not only being led by the Spirit, but walking in the Spirit constantly. And, and constant, like God is the same all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, being about it all the time, not just some of the time. You know, uh, sometimes we're into God, other times we're watching TV. I don't even watch TV anymore because it quenches the spirit. It's, it's full of lust and 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 negativity. And it's like my wife. I watch with my wife these game shows, and, and even that, you know, distracts me from the things of God. I like praising God, and right now I don't have a phone. I don't have nothing. So. My praise comes from my heart. The word is in me. I, I, the God is for me right now. I'm fighting. I'm, you know, I'm going through it. But hey, hey praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, no, I'm going through it uh, more than most people. But I'm staying strong. I'm going through the last test, and that's the rejection. People rejecting me, not because of bad things that I do, but because of what I believe. So now I got to go through that and trust God. You know that he's for me, that he's going to do what he said he's going to do, that he's been faithful to finish what he started, and that I need him, that without him I'm lost. And so I'm, I'm making it. I'm, I'm walking on water. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, by, by the grace of God every day. And I know I need him every day all the time, or I can mm -hmm. get discouraged, and I can get these thinking, oh, nobody loves me, nobody. It doesn't matter. God loves me, and that's enough. Mm -hmm. I know God loves me. He pulled me from death. He pulled me from Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. One more Amen. time. Amen. 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 Joe, can you repeat those four things for me? Who hurt you? What don't you like about you? Godly sorrow. Oh, that's uh, that's just on the miracle list. If you oh, do, you have the do you have that? Yeah. Okay. That's read it, so. yeah. I think that's based, and I hope I got that right. Does does that sound right? Like it's, huh? Yeah. Okay. So the, I think it's. Um, you would know, right? Yeah. Who hurt you? Yeah. 
Um, what don't you like about yourself? Negative thoughts from the enemy and godly. And what's that? Oh, okay. So rebellious against your parents. Okay. So that's kind of. Okay. Okay. So that's more of a. Right. And then, and then, and then, okay. The, did you get those? And then godly sorrow. Um, so. The Word of God often talks about repentance as a gift, which kind of confounds me. But that's what the Word of God says. So uh, sometimes when I'm asked to pray, you know, I'll say, thank you, God, for the gift of godly sorrow, which produces repentance leading to salvation or deliverance, not to be regretted. Uh, um, If I'm not mistaken, the miracle list actually says, pray for godly sorrow. Amen. You can't just say, I have got, you can't make yourself do it. Which actually brings us back to before we come to Christ. Um, If at any moment the Holy Ghost stopped drawing me, I dread that thought. I'm not coming to God because of anything that's good in my flesh. There is nothing good in my flesh. I can't remember which scripture my um, Apostle Paul says. In me, that is in my flesh, there is nothing good. If he, if he said in me there's nothing good, that would have been blasphemy because the Holy Spirit's in him, the Holy Spirit's in me. But in my flesh, there's nothing good. And so, um, just I, I have to be drawn to God constantly. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff I, I, I don't understand. And I have to remember that I don't understand. Sometimes I think I understand, and that's when I start, my life starts getting jacked up. Um, and, uh, and so the more you're, you're going through your own self-deliverance, repentance, forgiveness, um, renewing your mind, and you get to know yourself, because uh, most of us don't even know our, our real personality hasn't, we don't know our real personality. In, in, the, in the rejection chart, it shows this person here, which is the real self, which is emaciated. Fortunately, he still has the smile, because he knows Christ is gonna help him blow out these spirits. Come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and right, and um, and so I lost my train of thought there. Um, Our real personalities and like who we are. Right, right. So. Um, Yeah, so I, I'll just go through this quickly because we only have about 10 minutes. Um, so, of course, the rejection spirit comes in and somebody hurts you. You don't feel, you don't feel accepted. You don't feel approved. You don't feel loved. And so, of course, the enemy, um, he wants you to take one of his solutions, which is rebellion. But he can't get that in first. He wants you to take his solution. How do I get them to take my solution? How do I get them to drink alcohol? Hmm. Hopelessness. Right. Thank you. So.
so he gets you a problem. Then he sends you a friend that says, hey, why don't you drink some of this? You'll feel better. So he starts, he wants this one in, rebellion. He starts off with rejection. Then he moves over to getting you to believe that um, love is approval from man. Love is... is uh, is spelled different, L-U-S-T, lust, that, um, so it try, he tries to pervert what love is. Notice it's on the wedding finger. Yes. Because he wants you to be wedded to the ways of the world, the spirit of the world. Yes. Right? And he starts loading in these other spirits until... You put something on the other, the opposing finger. So these these spirits, the way that Ida May was exp it was explained to her, these spirits are like this, and you try to separate them, right? The op so these are like polar opposites, mm -hmm. and if you have uh, a dipsychus, a double soul, I believe you're you're always alternating be between these. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the pointing finger. <laughs> so is this. Mm -hmm. I reject you. I reject me. Yeah. Right. That's right. And if you're doing them all the time, yeah. double-minded, you're never balanced. You're ne never letting this guy form. You're, you're stuck with that personality that the devil's trying to create in you. Yeah. And so the opposite of this wedding finger Instead of being wedded to the world, you're wedded to yourself. Mm. Self-will, selfishness, stubbornness. Mm. Um, so I think that's a good chapter. It, 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 even though it was originally geared for schizophrenia, um, I think the reason it offends people is because they keep thinking schizophrenia the way doctors define it. Once you get over that and say, well, I don't care what it says, I want to get well. I want to know Jesus. I know Jesus, but I don't really know him. He keeps surprising me at how. meek he is. And he actually wants me to be like him. And gives me the power to do so. Amen. So, so if not for yourself, at least for people that you're ministering to, I would encourage you to study that chapter. Um, and go out and just start screwing things up. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a caveat. I mean, you got to know that when you make mistakes, of course, the enemy's going to try to blow it out of proportion and discourage you from moving forward. Because you don't want to make, you don't want to feel, it's not that you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to feel that, oh, I hurt that person so bad. They, uh, or I screwed that up or, oh man, I felt so proud and now, and, and now I lost my anointing. No, you didn't. You just, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You're not operating in love. Just, yeah. just get back, just get back with fellow, just keep fellowshipping with people and um, just keep moving forward. It's not you anyway. It's not me anyway. It's the Holy Ghost. I'm just available. I'm not able to do anything good unless I'm grafted in the vine. I can't do anything. Anything good comes from above. Okay, so... I think we're going to wrap it up. One quick, real quick. 
for everybody that's going through stuff, rejoice in the Lord, for he's found you worthy. I said, through many trials and tribulations, when you enter into the kingdom of God, you got to go through the fire. And, and going through the fire with, with, with him and with you, it's easy. It's when you start doubting that he's with you that it gets hard. Uh, seek, seek him. Draw near to him during the trials. You focus your mind on him. Keep your minds on, on things above, not on the world. The world's going to take you down, no doubt. If you keep your mind focused on above, you're going to keep going up. Amen. Amen. Can I just add one thing to what you just said? That over there, Romans twelve twelve, we join one whole patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Amen. 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 There you go. Amen. Okay, so we still got five minutes, but I think we should. I'm just going to end in a. I'm usually not. Um, I'm usually long winded, so <laughs> I don't know why I'm cutting this short. <laughs> Father God, I just want to thank you for the gathering of the saints here and those online and watching in future broadcasts. And I pray that if I said anything that was out of line that you didn't want me to say, that it just be washed away. forgotten. And if I say anything that was helpful, that it be magnified, that you get the glory. I thank you that you you use imperfect vessels because we can't take credit, we can't be tempted. We hate pride. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all your provisions. We thank you for all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places which we have received through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank you that we, you commanded us through your word to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And we always need grace. We thank you, Lord, for calling us to repentance, calling us to believe your word, all of it, even the parts that hurt, even the parts that are uncomfortable. Amen. And we thank you for the gift of faith not our faith, not the faith that we have in our flesh, but the faith that you've given us through the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. We just thank you, Lord, for helping us to release those people that have hurt us. We thank you that we are so privileged in this country right now. We still have the word. And we're sorry that we don't use it more. We don't study it more. We don't love it. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you teach us how to receive the love of the truth. And I pray blessings on my brothers and sisters that came to see you. They didn't come to see me. They came to watch the movement, the manifest presence of your Holy Spirit. I pray you teach us how to develop better relationships with one another, to love our enemies, to bless those that curse us, to do good to those that hate us, to pray for those who despitefully use us and persecute us, gossip about us, speak ill of us, lie about us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you send them the Holy Spirit and that they may know the love of Christ. And pray those watching online and in future broadcasts, I pray you bless them, Lord. 
If there is anyone opposed to this ministry, speaking against this ministry, we bless you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, so uh, if anyone needs prayer, um, we've got a few ministers here, and if you want to come on up for personal prayer or deliverance.